I was just reading the chapter on regression. Well, it looks like we've come to our final class and we're going to go over regression. I would just like to talk to you about two issues that uh, we need to be aware of when we do regression analysis. And those two issues are called dummy variables and multicollinearity. So the first one is dummy variables. So if you download the Excel files that I have posted, you'll see a sheet called state data. So this is data from every state with a bunch of details and in particular uh, details about COVID. And what we would like to do is run some regressions and answer some questions. So the question that's on my mind and you might have been seeing in the news is are Republicans or Democrats better at managing COVID within their states. If you look in column F, we have the party of the governor of the state. So the governor of the state is either Republican or Democrat for all 50 states. At the moment, there are no independents. And uh, we would like to do regressions with that. Unfortunately, I can't do regression with the word Democrat or Republican. Uh, so I have to do something to it. Now, your first inclination might be just to assign them a category, Democrat 1, Republican 2, and unfortunately that doesn't work. And the reason it doesn't work is because if you assign the numbers 1 and 2, then what you're telling the regression equation is that uh, uh, Republicans have twice as much of something than Democrats do. Also, you could assign the categories the other way around so that Republicans are one and Democrats are two, in which case you're saying that the Democrats have twice as much of something. And then if you want to throw in independence, it gets really confusing because now if the independents are three, that means that Democrats have one of something, Republicans have two of it, and independents have three of it. What we have to do instead is create something called a dummy variable. And a dummy variable is a one if your data point has that characteristic and a zero otherwise. So in this case, I'm going to create a dummy variable for Republicans, which means that it's going to be a one if the governor of the state is a Republican and a zero otherwise. In this case, otherwise is all Democrats, but it, it, if there were independents or, I don't know, Federalists or Whigs or Communists or whatever else, then it would still be a one if they're a Republican and a zero otherwise. So if you look on the next sheet over where it says first questions, you'll see a column F where it says Republican dummy and it's a one if the governor's a Republican and it's a zero otherwise. So my question is, um, are Republicans or Democrats better at handling COVID? And I thought, what else might lead to COVID? And the first thing that came to my mind was, um, urban percent urban so that means the percentage of people living in cities because it seems like if you live in a city it's much more difficult to social distance and you have to ride public transportation and you have to be inside of buildings whereas if you live in a rural environment it's much easier to avoid other people and you have less contact with other people so you might you know like if you're in new york city for example you might run into you know twenty thousand people in a single day whereas if you're in um you know, happy Texas, you might only run into two or three people in a single day. Okay, so uh, column F is Republican dummy, column G is the percentage of urban. And what I would like to do is I would like to see if the COVID deaths, and this is deaths per million, whenever you use state data, you always wanna do per capita data, which means either per million or percentage wise, you don't wanna do the total deaths because Obviously, California is going to have the most because it has the most people. Texas is going to have the second most because it has the second most people. Uh, then New York and Florida, I forget which one's bigger, but they're going to come in well ahead of Wyoming or Hawaii or Rhode Island. Right? Texas has more everything than Rhode Island. Texas has more coastline than Rhode Island, and Rhode Island's an island. Texas has more liberals than Oregon because... Texas has 10 times as many people. Even if everyone in Oregon was a liberal, Texas still has more. But you could say percent liberal or liberals per million or something like that. So when you work with state data, you always wanna use the per capita. 
So what I want to do is I want to look at deaths per million, which is column C, and I want to see if they're predicted by columns F and G, which is the Republican dummy and the percent urban. So I'm going to let you go ahead and run that regression, and I'll pause for a second, and then we'll look at it together. So here's when you run the data analysis tool pack, here's uh, what your um, uh, screen should look like. And the biggest mistake that people make is if they have labels and they highlight the labels, they forget to click the word labels, or they don't highlight the labels, but they still click the word labels. Uh, in the first case, it won't run because you'll have non-numeric data. In the second case, it will put the first column. Um, so instead of Republican dummies, it'll say one is the name of your category. And instead of percent urban, it'll say 59 is the name of your category. Um, so just make sure if you're going to highlight the labels, you click the labels button. Okay, so run that regression. All right, so let's look at this regression and it's in the column that's labeled death party density, um, which sounds kind of like a punk band to me, but death party density. So look there and just double check and make sure that your results match those results. If they don't, pause the video and go back and reanalyze everything. Make sure you've highlighted the right stuff. Okay, uh, so the first question we might want to look at um, is look at the Republican dummy and say, um, uh, what's the effect? So the coefficient on a Republican dummy is 233.683. So what does that mean? Well, that means a Republican governors on average have 233.683 more deaths per million people in their state than the Democratic governors. But we want to go over and look at the p-value and see if this is statistically significant. So let's look at the p-value and is it statistically significant? Okay, so the p-value here is 0.265. So that p-value is um, bigger than 0 0.05. So it's 25%, which is bigger than 5% which means that we would fail to reject the null hypothesis. Remember, this is a p-value for the hypothesis that the coefficient is actually equal to zero. And what we're saying is if the coefficient is actually equal to zero, then by random chance to find a number that is at least as large as 233, uh, which would be either 233 or greater or negative 233 or smaller, is 25%. So we would fail to reject the null hypothesis because it's too likely to have occurred by chance. And what that means is if you want to say that um, Republican governors have no difference in deaths per million than Democratic governors, I'm not going to argue with that. I cannot reject that hypothesis. It's just too likely to have happened by chance. Uh, so in this case, the uh, the, the regression suggests that Democrats and Republicans are pretty much equal in terms of um, death rates per million for the COVID virus. Uh, if we look at percent urban, that number is 10.58968. So what does that tell us? Well, that tells us that for every 1% of the population that lives in an urban area, uh, there's 10 more deaths per million. However, if we look over at the p-value, what does the p-value tell us? Well, again, the p-value is greater than 0 0.05, so it tells us that that number is not significant. So we reject the null hypothesis, and we say we can't really, we don't have enough evidence to suggest that that number is different than zero. So probably the percent urban doesn't really have an effect on um, the deaths from COVID. Uh, and just for fun, let's look at R squared. That's 0 0.05196. What does that tell us? That tells us that the percentage of the variance that's explained in COVID deaths, it's explained by uh, the party of the governor and the uh, percent urban is about 5%. So we have some amount of variance from state to state. They have different values. And if we look at that, 95% of it is unexplained and 5% of it is explained by the party of the governor.
and the percent of the state that lives in urban areas. All right, let's do another one. Um, in this case, let's look at cases per million. So if we go back to the first questions, there's column B, which is cases per million. So this is how many people got COVID, not how many people died of it. And we wanna do that and we wanna look at a uh, party again and also the density of uh, the population. So I'm gonna let you run that and we'll revisit here in a second. Okay, so I have also run it in, it's in cases party density and just make sure your results match the results that are there, that you're you know, doing this regression correctly. And what we see here is that the coefficient on Republicans is 25,000. And what does that mean? That means Republican governors on average have 25,000 more cases per million than Democratic governors. But what we don't know from looking at that number is whether 25,000 is a really big number or not. Right, so for deaths it was 233 and that wasn't really a big enough number. But for cases it's 25,000, so we'd have to look at what? That's right, we have to look at the p-value to see if that coefficient is significantly different than zero. So the p-value here is 0 0.0058, which means what? Well, 0 0.005 is smaller than 0 0.05. Uh, it's 10 times smaller. So that means that the probability of getting a result as extreme as 25,000, which is either 25,000 or more, or negative 25,000 or less, is only a half a percent. And we're setting our, our alpha value to be 5%, and so this is more unexpected than uh, we're willing to accept as, prob as, as random chance. Therefore, we reject the null hypothesis that the coefficient is zero. So we conclude that yes, it is statistically significant. So yes, Republican governors do um, have more of their citizens getting COVID, but there's no difference, no significant difference in the number of citizens that die of COVID in Republican governor states. Um, and if we look at the p-value for percent urban, we see that that's 0.5, which is much bigger than 0 0.05. That's not significant. So the urban population doesn't seem to matter very much. Um, so Republican governors do have more cases, but they don't have more deaths, at least not statistically significantly more deaths. Um, probably the reason for this is that the initial wave hit the Northeast, which tends to be um, more democratic governors and the initial wave had a higher death rate so um, the the northeast managed to get sick when covid was more dangerous uh, than uh, i don't want to say it currently is because i don't know when you watch this video what will be going on but <laughs> but it is when i collected this data all right so let's see if female governors are better than um, male governors at protecting their citizens from death. And in this case, I was a little disappointed that the percent urban didn't turn out. So I also got information for uh, the percent of people who graduated from high school and also for the percentage of people who um, graduated from college or got a bachelor's degree. So um, if we look back at the first question tab, in column I, there's a female dummy, so it's a one for every state that has a female governor and a zero for every other state that either has a male governor or an unlisted governor. I think in this case, everyone is male or female. Um, and it's got the percentage of people who graduated from high school or who got at least a high school degree uh, in that state. Um, and so let's see if those two things are significant predictors of the deaths. So I'm gonna let you run that and um, we'll talk in a second. Okay, so there's a tab called Death Sex High, which is just a great name for a tab, um, but let's look at that Death Sex High and make sure that your values match the values that are there, that you're doing the regression correctly. If not, 
send me an email, but hopefully you are. Okay, so the female dummy is 164. What does that mean? That means that female governors have 164 more deaths per million citizens than the male governors. So the female governors are doing worse on average than the male governors. However, we have to look at the p-value to see if that's statistically significant or if that's just random chance. In other words, is 164 really big enough to qualify as a, a difference? And so if we look over at the p-value, the p-value is 0.42. So what does that mean? Well, 0.42 means it's not significant. So we fail to reject the null hypothesis that that coefficient's actually zero. And it seems that we can't say that it's not zero. We're not gonna say that the female governors are doing worse. Rather, we're gonna say that result is just due to random chance. Okay, what about the percentage of people graduating from high school? Does that have any effect on deaths? And the coefficient there is negative 149. What does that mean? Well, that means for every 1% increase in the percentage of the population that has a, uh, a high school degree, uh, that graduates from high school, that there's 149 less deaths. But what do we have to do? Right, we have to look at the p-value to see if it's significant difference. And if we go over the p-value, it's 5.9e to the negative sixth which means that it's a decimal point and then you start putting zeros and when you get to the sixth decimal point, this is the negative six, then you put a five. So it's point zero, 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 five, nine. That is much smaller than point zero five. So we would say that, yes, we reject the null hypothesis so this is a statistically significant result, okay? So um, the odds of getting a result that high or higher or that large, negative 149 or lower, or 100 positive 149 or higher are about five in 10,000? So I guess six in 10,000 or 100,000? 100,000, 100, six out of every 100,000. And so we're going to say that's just too unusual. We reject that and instead decide that, yes, that is a meaningful result. Okay. So the more people you graduate from high school, the less people are going to die of COVID. Um, and let's look at the R squared for fun. The R squared is 0.359. And what does that tell us? Well, that tells us that 35, almost 36% of the variance in COVID deaths is explained by the sex of the governor and the percentage of people graduating from high school. Probably most of it is explained by the percentage of people graduating from high school because we decided that the governor sex is not um, statistically significant. Um, okay, so that's a dummy variable. So some things you have to do with dummy variables. We have two parties, but we only have one dummy variable. You always want one fewer dummy variables than the number of categories you have. So we have two categories, one dummy variable. If we had three categories, how many dummy variables would we need? That's right, we would need two. If we had 14 categories, we would need 13 dummy variables. The reason is the intercept tells us what the value is when everything is zero. So looking at this one, um, the intercept of 15,000 says that in a state that had a uh, zero percentage of people graduating from high school and zero for the female dummy, we would have 15,000. Zero for the female dummy means that it's a male, okay? So you always have one category that's your baseline and then all the other categories are in comparison to that. So the female dummy is telling us how many more we have for females than for males. If we had say three categories, like say Ford, General Motors, and Toyota, and we made Toyota the um, base category, then the GM dummy would tell us how much more GMs were worth 
and the Ford dummy would tell us how much more Fords were worth than Toyotas, but not how much more Fords were worth than GMs. Right? So, um, so one of the categories always has to be the base category, and then you create dummies for all the rest, but leave one as the base. Usually leave the biggest one, or if there's one that's particularly sensible to leave, then we would leave that one. So for example, say you said, uh, you know, high school education, bachelor's degree, master's degree, PhD, probably you want to leave high school education as the base, and then you would see how much more of whatever you got with a bachelor's degree, a master's degree, or a PhD, or terminal doctorate degree of whatever form. Um, but you don't want to have a category that is too small. So like if we have one independent governor, you wouldn't want that to be the baseline category um, because you only have one of them. Uh, anyway, the point is you can create a dummy variable if you have categorical data, but you create, and it's a one if it's in that category and a zero otherwise, and you create one fewer dummy variables than the categories. Okay, the other thing I want to talk to you about is called multicollinearity. And first, let me tell you what collinearity is. Collinearity occurs when two variables are highly correlated with each other and you're using them to predict a third variable. For example, if I want to predict how fast you run and I think your shoe size predicts that, well, if I put your right shoe size in and your left shoe size in, then we have a problem because your right shoe size and your left shoe size are correlated. Now mathematically what's going to happen is you're going to end up with dividing by zero, but conceptually what happens is we don't know where to apportion the effect. So for example, say your uh, running speed is uh, you know, 10 meters plus your shoe size. If you put in both the left shoe size and the right shoe size, then the equation doesn't know to say whether it's 10 meters times your left shoe size plus zero meters uh, times your right shoe size or zero meters times your left shoe size and 10 times your right or five times your left and five times your right or seven times your left and three times your right or 14 times your left and negative four times your right right conceptually you have an infinite number of ways you can apportion that and that's collinearity when two things are a linear combination of each other or they have a linear relationship which is correlation um, Multicollinearity occurs when more than one thing predicts the uh, another variable that's one of the independent variables. On so the right-hand side of the equation is one of the x's. So for example, you might say, hey, how much do college football coaches get paid? And you might say, well, I think uh, they get paid based on their um, uh, offensive um, capabilities and their defensive capabilities and the number of games they win. And that's probably all true, except for regression equation, your offensive and your defensive capabilities probably is a good predictor of how many games you win. If you're good at offense and defense, you probably win a lot of games. If you're bad at them, you probably don't win any. So that's multicollinearity when the offense and defense predicts the third variable. Then you gotta throw something out. You gotta say, okay, either I'm just going to look at games one or I'm going to throw out games one. I'm just going to look at offense and defense. Okay. That's how you control for multicollinearity. And the way you can tell if you have multicollinearity is if you run a regression and your T values, uh, your P values are all not significant, but you look at your F statistic and your F statistic is significant. So the F statistic is a hypothesis of the, uh, the hypothesis test of the test that everything is equal to zero, except for your intercept, but all your X's are equal to zero. If your F statistic says, no, that's not true, but then you look at all your individual uh, p-values and each individual one is true, uh, is insignificant, then that probably suggests that you have multicollinearity. Uh, if you have perfect collinearity, like left foot, right foot, and they're both exactly the same every time, then um, one of your T values is going to blow up and be like 65,000, which is like the biggest number they can have in Excel, and your P value is going to be zero, and it's going to be really weird. Um, okay, so just be careful 
that you don't put two variables that are highly correlated with each other in your equations. Okay, Get rid of one of them and try to find a different variable that's not highly correlated. All right, so that's all I have for you. I'm going to give you some practice and stuff. Um, but I did want to just sort of walk you through what we've done real quick. Okay, So we started off talking about probability, and then we talked about probability distributions, and then we looked at a probability distribution, the binomial, and then we looked at the normal distribution, and then we looked at sampling, and how sampling leads to a normal distribution, except for because we're collecting a sample, we actually have to use a t-distribution, and how we can do hypotheses tests to see if uh, the mean is what we think the mean is. And then uh, we looked at correlations. So now we have two different variables, an X and a Y, and how are they related, and how we can make a line with an X and a Y. And then we looked at regression, where we're going to fit a line. So we say, hey, I think there's a linear relation to the, between these that's not perfect, but I'm going to fit a line. And we got to use all the hypothesis testing and t-statistics t and stuff. And then we looked at multiple regression, where essentially we're doing that in multidimensional space. I can't draw a picture of it, but basically we're drawing a line in multidimensional space and we're saying, hey, these X's make a line that predict this Y value. Okay, And with that, we can actually look at the data and hopefully read the regression output and understand the data. And if you want to do your own regression analysis. So we were able to look and say, hey, CO2 does seem to be a good predictor of uh, global temperature. But then we also were able to look and say, hey, it seems that Republicans and Democrats are about equally bad or good, depending on how you look at it, at handling COVID deaths, that there's not a difference between those two. And, you know, those are two conflicting opinions that mo a lot of people, if whatever news station you like to watch, probably doesn't say that both of those things are true. Um, they probably either say that global warming is not true, but, um, uh, and Republicans are not any worse than Democrats, or they say that yes, global warming is true and Democrats are better than Republicans. But we can actually look and resolve our own questions and we don't have to be ignorant of the truth. We can say, I believe this because I looked at the data not I believe this because the people around me are saying this. Um, you can choose to be ignorant if you want, but you don't have to be. So it's your choice and I hope that you will use it um, to make your life better and, and the world better. All right, I'm gonna give you some practice problems if you wanna do them. Of course, I suggest you try them and then the test and good luck, thank you.